Welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm Jenny Carlson here at the Oklahoman, and I'm joined by Cedric Golden from the Austin American State Statesman. Ced, you're looking sharp. You got the pocket square working, my friend. <laughs> working the pocket square and got my Prince Purple tie on, his royal badness, RIP. Still my guy, even if he is dead. I'm telling you, things must be good down in Austin. You're feeling good, and I, I am too, but the NBA playoffs, at least as it relates to the local team here in Oklahoma City, it's over with. But, man, we're going to lead off today with the NBA playoffs because there's so much going on that people are talking about. Said, uh, clearly this Rockets-Warriors series has everybody's attention. So does Kevin Durant. What have you been impressed by as you've watched these two go at it? He's on an all-time heater right now. He just doesn't seem to miss much. Uh, I know he was at one point, he's averaged 40 points a game in his last five. And I think he had like 29 in this one. So he's still around 40 a game uh, over the last series or so. And uh, just unstoppable and the mid range game uh, shot to his game over the summer to go with the three pointers. He's making his free throws, going to the hole. Uh, just, just having an absolute monstrous playoff so far. And, uh, Golden State, it appears that the memories of the Los Angeles Clippers are well behind them. They're up 2-0 in the series, going into Saturday night in Houston, Game 3. And I get the feeling that the Warriors are probably going to win one of those and be up 3-1 because Kevin Durant is an alpha male uh, on the court. I don't know if he's an alpha male to lead a franchise to a win. That's for another conversation for Oklahomans. But as far as being on the same team with Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Draymond Green and Andre Iguodala, uh, I mean, starting five All-Stars, I mean, that's going to be hard to beat. Arguably the greatest starting five in the history of the league. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting that in a year when Durant isn't anywhere close to the MVP discussion, he's asserting himself in these playoffs and making everybody set up and say, hey, is this guy the best player on the planet right now? I mean, he's playing at that level. You even had Patrick Beverly uh, said you referenced that Clippers series. Patrick Beverly, after the series was over, basically saying, we tried everything, and, and he's just Kevin Durant. We can't do anything about it. And so he's playing great basketball, but Cedric, I want to talk for a second about the way this officiating refereeing cloud has come over these playoffs because I don't know what you've seen, but I was watching, I just had the, the TV on the other day during one of those mid-afternoon sports shows and I happened to glance up and they were doing a whole segment on Scott Foster, one of the NBA refs who refed game two of this series. This has become like its own sideshow to the whole thing and yet it's sort of taken over the big top said this is not a good thing when you have a guy like Kevin Durant playing at this level playing against a guy that could win the MVP in James Harden all these other series going on and yet all we can talk about is the officiating and that's bad and this series may go down as one that's that's going to be more about the officiating than the play and that's unfortunate I hope that it doesn't go into that realm. Got to remember, Scott Foster uh, had to throw out DeMar DeRozan in the previous series, uh, Denver and San Antonio, because he called DeMar DeRozan for a foul, and DeMar threw the ball at him. Yeah. So that's how much players are upset or frustrated with Scott Foster. Chris Paul famously said, I wish that guy wasn't reffing my games. Uh, this I got a problem with this guy. Uh, so there's history, and you don't want to be known as the guy that's that's infused with players. You kind of want to be the unknown, um, anonymous ref that they go, oh, yeah, he's a good ref. You want to mm -hmm. be that guy. Yeah. You don't want to be a ref that's being called out in the media, and it's the same as, an, as a football deep snapper. You never want your name in the paper. Yeah. If your name in the, is in the paper as a deep snapper, you're probably not going to be a deep snapper for long. <laughs> No, that's true. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if the NBA takes any steps. I don't know if there's anything they can do as it's going on in the playoffs, but I have to think if this continues, if there's another dust-up uh, like we saw in that first game of the Rockets-Warriors uh, series that really became the story for days, you know, if there's something else like that, you have to think in the offseason the NBA might be looking at what can we do? Is it, you know, allowing officials more latitude to call technicals, to, you know, possibly be ejecting guys, 
more quickly in the regular season where you set a precedent and say, listen, we're not going to put up with anything. I just can't think the NBA is really excited about all these great games happening and all that anybody wants to talk about is how the referees are not good, whether they are or not. You know, they're always people are always going to go with that. So it's just going to be fascinating to see how does this progress and what does the NBA do potentially after the season's over.